Hickok 45 here with an old model Ruger. If you listen to the hammer cocking, you might have discerned that. Let's shoot something. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's stop the stop sign. Woo. What about that one? What about the cowboy? Oh yeah, I got him in the leg. You can do better than that. I knew we could. That was five shots. That should be it. Let's check. Yes, that was five. Yes, got an old model Ruger. And if you don't know what an old model is, I'll talk a little bit about that. But it's a three screw old model action. Okay, 45 Colt. This one has some history. Okay, sort of with me and with the world. Okay, so I'm so firearms. And that's what this is. It's vintage like me. And I have a history with this firearm. And I have maybe talked about it a little bit with some of you. Maybe not. Uh, most of you know because so many new people. I've noticed with, a, unlike a Colt, yeah, you gotta pop that thing. It's not quite long enough or something. All right, get those empty buds. So anyway, uh, this is an old model Ruger Blackhawk. What's that mean? Why do I have Colts on the table? Yeah, just like Glocks. I can't keep them off the table. <laughs> okay, well, there's a reason. A uh, little comparison, not too much. But this is, uh, this was made in 1972, before a lot of you were born, is my guess. And uh, Ruger started making their single actions in, uh, what, uh, the early 50s. They came out with the Mark I, the semi-automatic 22 long rifle, little semi-automatic pistol, uh, 51, I don't know, 50, 51, early 50s. And I'm gonna load while I'm talking, is that okay? And, uh, and they also came out with a, single six a single action in 22 very popular uh, firearm uh, i think it surprised everybody the world how popular it was we missed our cowboy guns in the early 50s because colt quit making them uh you know during world war ii uh, and so rigor i think was about the only company making a single action a cowboy gun you know uh well western you know great western was making them maybe but uh, Ruger got into it and they made a fairly economical single action in 22. And it was well made. Very, very popular, very collectible. They still make them. They still make the Blackhawks and Super Blackhawks and all those kinds of things. But in the uh, 50s, they were just making the 22 long rifle until 55, 1955. They, uh, they beefed it up. They saw the importance, the, importance, the, uh, the significance and the influence of the westerns, the movies, the TV series, and everything. And the Colt wasn't making them at that time. Uh, they still hadn't picked back up making the things. And uh, and so they made this in a big caliber, 357 Magnum, I think was the first. And uh, you know, so 45 Colt, then they went into 44 and everything. But that's what they did. And it had the same action as the Colt Okay, you know, in the new Rugers, single actions, whether it's a Vaquero or a Blackhawk or Super Blackhawk, whatever, you just open up the uh, loading gate and that frees up the cylinder to load it, right? And it has a transfer bar on the hammer so you can load six rounds safely. The hammer is not resting on a live round or on the firing pin, okay? As it is with these old Colts and with this one, okay? So they changed that in 73. Ruger changed the action and it's called the new model, okay? This is a three screw model. It's got three screws on the side. If you notice, it's like the Colt. And in 70, or yeah, 73, they changed the action. And I think it's a two screws or it's just different. And it doesn't, and it, uh, you, you don't have to cock the hammer to, to load it, you know, half cock it like you do with a Colt in this. You uh, just open up the loading gate ever since 73, okay? And it's got the transfer bar, you can load six. So that's why it's important if you have an old Ruger, you need to know whether it's, uh, it's not too hard to tell, uh, whether it's like this one or it's the new action where you just open up the loading gate and if the cylinder is free, it's a new action, right? And uh, we'll talk a little more about that. I want to shoot some more. Can I shoot this paper? All right. Boom. Now let's smoke a little pot. <laughs> that was a bad shot. That was way off. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm empty. Yeah. Uh, did you ever do that? You just, for some reason, you shot before you were on target? This is a pretty cool gun. You know, I'm a little bit of a, a, a Colt and a Colt clone snob. Okay, not just a Colt snob, <laughs> Claude. I'm a Claude too, but a, uh, a clone clog, which means a firearm that's the same size as the Colt and made the same way, all right? But this is this is a nice gun, and these are nice, really nice guns. This thing, uh, it feels like a, oh, a, a bank vault. It just, uh, everything about it, when you cock it, it just uh, sounds solid, feels solid, shoots well, sights are on. Uh, again, you know, it doesn't free up the shoulder, so it tells you it's the old action. You got to half cock it. There you go. Second click, and that frees up the cylinder to load, just like these Colts. Okay. So the old action Ruger, the three screw. All right. Up, I think from like 55 to 62, they were flat tops. They call them the flat tops. You'll hear that term. And I don't think they had this little raised part on either side of the sight. Okay. And then in, uh, I guess, 62, they kind of raised that to protect the sight, the rear sight, a little bit. And uh, they might have beefed them up a little bit in 62 as well. Because they, uh, they had the 44 Magnum. They were early with the 44 Magnum, actually. Uh, the story is they might have even beaten Smith & Wesson. One of the Ruger employees was at a, the, over on a range somewhere that Remington had been uh, uh, working out and doing research. And they found some uh, empties that were... 44 out on the they probably weren't marked. There were 44 Magnum cases. And that was like 55, 56 along in there, 55, I guess, or 54, I don't know. And that's the story anyway. Whether it's true or not, who knows? And so Ruger actually went to work and so they realized, okay, Smith is gonna put together a 44 Magnum. I think they all knew that, that Elmer Keith had been working on that and been trying to talk them into it and everything. And so Ruger actually uh, produced one of these, the uh, Blackhawk and 44 Magnum, uh, maybe even before the Smith was available. But when the Smith was available, they, they weren't really widely available. And so Ruger took advantage of that and they could make their single actions and making them. And so you could find them in the 50s. Now, not me, I wasn't looking for them. I was a little young. Uh, so, but even in the 70s, after Dirty Harry came out, when you couldn't find a Model 29, you could possibly find a Ruger. Okay, 44 Magnum Super Blackhawk. Okay, which is what I did first. Okay, all right, let's shoot this thing again. And I got a little story to tell you about this gun. This is the first center fire uh, firearm, period, that I ever owned. Not this exact gun, but this exact model. The, the, I mean, this is it. Okay, except this is not the same serial numbered gun. Uh, I traded it off like an idiot. Uh, for the 44 Magnum, I think, as I recall, just had to have the 44 uh, Ruger. But I bought this in 1972. I bought one of these. So that's one reason this is such an attractive uh, firearm to me. It's loaded. Hey, brilliant, huh? You saw me do it. Uh, this is a 1972 model. Mine was a 72 model. And I was still in college, and I scraped up enough money. It was around $150. And I bought this. It was my first firearm that fired anything other than 22 long rifle. And boy, I thought I was John Wayne or somebody because I had a 45 Colt, a single action. All right. I was in high cotton, no doubt about it. Let's go over there and hit the gong with it just to celebrate. Oh, man. Let's try a buffalo. <laughs> and a ram. Oh boy. That's a keeper. I'm going to hit the gong again. I think. Uh, you never know for sure. I can have one round left. I was determined to hit this. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I should have one left. Yeah, I wanted to see that uh, <laughs> pin swing a little bit. Oh yeah, this 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 firearm is really special to me. I know coming from a Colt Colt clone snob, you know uh, that might seem funny to you, but I uh, you can't believe how excited I was to have this firearm in 1972, and I didn't know much about firearms, you know I may not now in your opinion, 
and I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, right? But I, I didn't know much at all, at really, nothing about big bore stuff much. And uh, I mean at all, really, I was a dumb college student uh, and I, I didn't know, I knew Colt 45, I've seen the movies. And one reason I can relate to some of the uh, issues that many of us have, you have, going into gun shops, getting your first gun and all that sort of thing. Uh, nowadays, gun shop owners, clerks, workers are a little better. You know, you're, you don't run into that uh, angry or that ill-tempered one very often anymore. Or they're not going to be having a job, for one thing. There's too much competition. But I bought this in Clarksville, Tennessee. I was a dumb college student. And I went into the gun shop. It was up on Riverside Drive, if you know anything about Clarksville. I don't remember the name of the shop. Maybe Sportsman Store or something like that. They even sold boats. I remember there being boats in there, that kind of thing. And they had a gun section in the back. And get this, I went in and asked, I had a little money, and asking to see a Colt 45. You know, I mean, isn't that what John Wayne carried? I wanted a Colt 45. I wanted a big caliber, because I knew my uncle had had one that gave me the bug for guns. Well, here come the questions. And in a rarely kind of an annoying way, he was irritated that I didn't know more about it. Well, did you want a Ruger? 45 do you want a colt now you know colts are expensive you want a colt 45 you want a 40 what do you want what kind of gun do you want a uh, 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 colt 45 That's all i knew you know i do you mean there's there's different kinds of them you know i would just barrel length and i didn't know colts were more expensive and I, I had never heard of ruger i didn't know what a ruger was so i told you how dumb i was you think i'm dumb now that's pretty dumb. That's pretty ignorant, isn't it? But it was 1972. I was even more ignorant than now. And I didn't, I'd never heard of Ruger. Just hadn't. And uh, I don't think. And uh, so anyway, this was your classic case of young guy. I was, uh, was I like 20 and green and didn't know anything and was very polite. But uh, I remember the guy's looks, and a big old guy, and he just, uh, he just had no patience at all just because I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know anything about guns and all that kind of thing. And he pulled out a Ruger and showed me and told me what a Colt would cost. And even if you had one, all this kind of stuff. And well, long story short, I did end up with the Ruger. I realized I was smart enough to realize that was the one I could afford. <laughs> and, uh, and don't be ordering a Colt because I couldn't buy that. But I, I, I did get it. And uh, it was this gun. And I was very pleased, other than my experience at the gun shop, I was really in hog heaven with my hog leg. And I would shoot it when I could, but I couldn't afford to shoot it much at all. And uh, back then you could buy ammo individually. You could go in, they would sell you like five or 10 rounds. And that's what I did. In fact, I, I dragged out a couple, I think are, are from those days that have been in the barn all this time. I've just had them, I kept them in the shelf I've had that I got in, in, during those days, the early 70s. I remember the first time I bought a whole box. I, I want to say it was $4, which was a lot of money then and uh, for a dumb college student. And But I would buy them individual copy or you know rounds and go shoot five or 10, 10 rounds. You know, out at Austin P. I went to Austin P. They had a, we called it the Austin P. Farm. I don't know, it was back in the woods and I don't know if it really was or not, but we'd go back there and shoot a little bit, some of us. And, uh, but this is what I had. This was my gun, my big bore. And uh, the very next one I got was a year or two later, a year later, I guess, was the uh, Model 19 Smith & Wesson. Boom, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so they're good shooters. <laughs> oh man. Let's see if I can bear down on one of those two liters. Uh, why did I miss that? I went to the left of it, I think. Yeah. So again, it's uh it's like the old action. You cock it to half cock, like a Colt, Colt clone, and you get the rounds out. Now what Ruger did when they came out in 73 with the new action. The transfer bar and all that, you could, you know, like I said, you could have the hammer down on, you know, six and it was not a problem. What they did was they ret retrofitted them for free, and I think they still do. Like you sent this one to Ruger, uh, they, they put the new action in, you know. There were lawsuits, I think, and I know there were accidents, you know, just like there are with anything, it was a lawnmower, a chainsaw. 
and, uh, and all that stuff I think led them to putting the warning on the barrel and all that kind of you know, crazy stuff. Uh, one of the rumors was it was just a guy in a pickup truck that fell off on the floor of one of these and he got shot and he got they sued. And I don't know if that's the reason. I couldn't find anything on that a long time. For a long time I thought that was the main reason, but I, I don't know. There may have been several accidents and lawsuits. Uh, yeah, it is. If somebody wrecks a car, they want to blame Chevrolet, right? Uh, so, but anyway, it's, uh, you know, it is something to think about and they, uh, the action, there's no doubt about it. You got to know what you're doing and, and, and that, I didn't know what I was doing either with that. I didn't know about the single action. I was very green, very ignorant. There was no internet at the time that I could find. Nobody doing gun videos that I was aware of in 72. And I actually had a negligent discharge with this thing. It was really out of just stupidity. It was, it was out of ignorance more so than... It was carelessness, but it was stupidity to an ignorance. Because uh, I had it loaded, and I remember cocking, and I had loaded six. I didn't know John Wayne hadn't told me yet. Uh, I hadn't seen the shooters yet. I guess because that movie hadn't been made yet. Yeah, but uh, where he explains that, and I remember I let the hammer down like that. Okay, I just sort of let it down, and a little too hard, and it hit the firing pin. And guess what? Pow. I was the first one to know it went off. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, ignorance is bliss. Uh, and we all, most of us survive our ignorant uh, stages, but I wanted to share some of that. Let me shoot a little more and I'll let you go. But this, this is a, a very special firearm for me. I don't really, I like it, but I like the Colt more or the Colt clone. And I brought these out just again to, to show you the difference. This one's made in 84. It's a very early one. And, and you know, it's, you know, you get with the, the Ruger, the thing they did, they made it, you could argue it's a better gun, of course, it'll handle more pressure, it's got adjustable sights on it, you know, and, and of course the transfer bar that, that had after 73, you know, was safer, so you could easily argue it's a better firearm, you know, but it's still in the old Colt, you know, and I brought the newer one out because they haven't changed same action <laughs> other than it looks nice all right so you got 84 1884 and you got 19 uh or 2016 right so uh and of course you got the same action okay half cock uh so i just just wanted to show you those side by side you know the lines and everything are different and that's why some of us are cold or cold, cold clone snobs you know this big old hump the top strap and everything and the big front sight standing way up on there. It's just, you know, it, it's just not a, it's not what Roy Rogers carried, John Wayne, <laughs> but they're great guns. And if you're gonna hunt with them and you're gonna wanna adjust the sights, then, you know, you need one of these. So anyway, uh, I react a lot about my history with it. Uh, if you don't remember anything, do remember though, if you do buy one of these old Brugers, know what kind of action you have. And just like if you get an old Colt or a Colt clone, you're gonna be very careful with it and load five. And uh, it may be that you would rather have the transfer bar system, right? All right, let's see what we can do in those two liters. All right. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna hit the gong again. I always say that like, like like there's nothing to it, and it's not too hard. But. Let's finish up on the cowboy. You want to? Because it is a 45 Colt. <laughs> 45 Colt, and uh, let's make sure that was the last one. Yeah, that was it. So, anyway, a lot of stuff you're not interested in, but it's a really uh, neat gun to me. Uh, and I'm probably gonna send Simpson Limited a check and keep this, okay? I've, I've looked at them from time to time at Tulsa and different places. Ah, I don't like it as much as a Colt or a Colt clone, but boy, that was my first big bore firearm of any kind. And uh, I really ought to buy it back, you know, uh, make up for my stupidity when I was young, I let it go. It's like I've done with the Python, right? So anyway, the uh, the three screw 
uh, old action Blackhawk and 45 Colt. That's what I've got here. And if you buy one today or you've bought one in the last 20, 30, 40 years, you know, you probably have the new action. You open up the hammer, you can see that transfer bar in there. And uh, you just open this up, that will tell you. Does the cylinder turn? Yep, you got the, the new action, which most of them have. So anyway, pretty neat old gun, and it's a good shooter. And some of y'all probably have them. Uh, and I'm glad to, uh, to get this old baby back, even though it's not the same one. It's exactly like it, and it is the same year of uh, production. So good old Ruger, 45 Colt, can't beat it. Life is good. Oh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K four five on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.